this positive note, I will conclude and introduce uh, Dmitro Shimkiv. Uh, Dmitro uh, has uh, joined the presidential administration in July of last year. He was appointed uh, by the president as the deputy head of the presidential administration in charge of uh, most of all economic, but also administrative and social uh, reforms. Uh, before that, he was CEO of Microsoft and before that a successful uh, IT entrepreneur. Uh, one interesting fact, uh, uh, during the Revolution of Dignity in December of uh, 2013, uh, Dmitro uh, suspended his uh, job, his, his, his management of uh, Microsoft and uh, became uh, very active and dedicated himself <coughs> towards um, the civic uh, activities and support of the revolution. Dmitro, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome. Uh, I think this is a very important time of the uh, year uh, and a very important time for, for Ukraine particularly. Um, I want to start by taking into account that this we have an investment conference. I would like to start with the event which is taking place today, which is extremely investment related, and I really hope that you will keep track this, um, of this event um, during the probably today and the next five days, which will be, or sorry, seven days, which will be very important. Actually, today is the opening of 3G tender in Ukraine. The uh, tender will be completed today, yesterday at 10 o'clock today, there will be an opening, which can bring additional $300 uh, million dollars, um, uh, towards the Ukrainian budget. Um, we have all necessary participants for the tender. It's a, op a great opportunity, and I would like to highlight this, because the country is going through a very tough um, security crisis. We have a very tough economic conditions, and under this condition, the country is doing a tender on their uh, uh, common or uh, commodity, um, selling it, attracting investments. We need to understand that each operator, will all telecom operator, will also invest additionally up to uh, six billion grivnas uh, over the two years in infrastructure. That's all together was going to trigger additional investments and additional growth to GDP. And it's happening today. I know there is a lot of discussion. There is a slightly delay. But it's happening today, it will be opening, and if two bits will be the same for one of the bands, there will be a, a verbal conversation, oh, verbal uh, bidding on uh, 23rd, next Monday. So this is just a side note, just to give you a glimpse that dis despite uh, a lot of things that Russian propaganda is broadcasting around Ukraine, Ukraine is going forward towards its goal, it's identified for European Union. The revolution of dignity defined a very, very clear objective. We want to, a vector is European vector. We signed uh, DCFTA, it was Europe. We defined a very, very clear pass to do. It's a long process. If we look at the DCFTA, more than 60% of the DCFTA is technical regulation. And countries that went through the technical regulation adjustments understand that it's going to take two, three years to make this happen. And this is a complex and long-term process, but it's all this started, and there is a very uh, clear pass that the government put in, in place making sure that we, we track the progress of the CFTA signage, uh, sorry, execution of the CFTA, and making sure that uh, the results get delivered. We also, during the, I'll go through the very, very high level overview, or helicopter view, what has been done, and what has still to happen. So first, we define very clearly the vision, um, probably first time in, in the history of Ukraine, we define a vision for, for the country, defined by the president with the strategy 2020, where we define where we would like to be in 2020, what are 25 KPIs describing the state of the economy as well as state of the social uh, affairs on, and relationship of the citizens in Ukraine. For, so this is very important because we define the uh, long-term objective. It, the strategy is not answering how, and that's why in order to answer the question how, the new, the new parliamentary election took place in November and in December there was a new parliament formed. The new parliament is established a foundation for the next, for the development of the strategy, the coalition. The coalition agreement defines a lot of set, a set of activities and actions and things that has to change the country by majority of the parliament. That parliament formed the government. 
I'm, I'm happy I'm not going to advertise a lot for the, or it's already been done for a lot of people uh, from business in the government. This is people who are business driven. This is people who've been doing and executing investments and analyzing investments and doing investments in Ukraine. And they fully understand all the obstacles, all the complexity that investors face in the country. So that government de developed a government plan for one and a half year. And that, and then during also the course, the uh, jointly with EU, there was a, a recovery plan or stabilization plan developed for three years. It's a high level um, document with a lot of details related to the objective that the country would like to achieve in 2020, related to the first step that the government will be doing during the next year or the current year. And then if we say, one of the uh, work that would probably start in 2016 and in 2017, it's where there will be the breakthrough plan, where we would like to go from 2017 to 2020, uh, defining the, um, the breakthrough. Ukrainian economy went through the significant shock. Over the last year, uh, and probably, and the majority of you have been watching, and I'm not gonna go into numbers and details, but 2015 is the year where we we have to stabilize the economy, to ensuring that its recovery takes place in 2016. That's why there is a set of key activities being done and the set of key reforms defined. Today, as, a, as a, an example, we have a National Reform Council, uh, the third meeting, where there's, I'm not, I'm not gonna disclose all the agenda because it was journalists gonna, uh, would be happy. There is a set of things that we would like to bring uh, into the reforms process. National Reform Council, for those who don't know, is actually a platform where we have all the representatives from the cabinet. So we have cabinet, we have president, we have uh, head of the parliament, we have head of the committees in the parliament, we ha have leaders of the fraction of coalition in the parliament, head of national security, uh, sorry, not the head, secretary of national security the council, governor of national bank, Basically, that represents 100% of decision makers, political, who involve in any reform execution or decision in one room. A lot of people, yes, but I can tell you that through the, some of the discussion that's already took place in the National Reform Council, some of the crucial decisions been able to address. And I forgot civil society representative there as well. We have four civil society representative in this forum. Some of the things that we will uh, go into the, let, let me go into the, some of the key reforms that are, we see as the key reforms for the execution in the very first year. Number one, it's anti-corruption and rule of law. Every investor would like to see that. And if you look at the majority of the efforts that the parliament is spending today and the whole discussion and the, uh, a lot of co complexity I mean, in the air is around about these areas. Anti-corruption, and we establish an anti-corruption bureau. Uh, we already, uh, the c committee which is selecting the head of anti-corruption bureau is already working through analyzing the finalists. Second, uh, we, the judicial reform, you know, uh, a lot of people who operated in Ukraine know the, the complexity of Ukrainian courts or uh, they are trustworthy. Um, and, and I think that this is one of the areas of change. When we analyze the, how long it's gonna take us to, to make the change with the, with the court system, it's probably one to two years as well, uh, because due to complexity of the change, for 23 years, nobody was doing anything with the court system. Or actually, they, they've done, they make it worse. They made it very controlled, they make it very uh, hand, hand managed, uh, and we need to bring a, an, in, an open and transparent court system into the country. The first law, on the court reform already passed. I wanna thank you for the, for the cooperation for all the uh, parliamentary, pal, parliamentarians. Uh, and there was a, again, there was a discussion. It's great. A lot of reforms in Ukraine are not happening one man told somebody to vote. No, it's not. It's actually a heavy discussion because at average, I have three to five groups for each reform having different opinions and we need to bring them all together to common ground. Third area, is the law enforcement. This element of the uh, uh, rule of law is law enforcement reform. And we all already starting with the, law, uh, with the police uh, transformation, which is actually the first public officials that you usually see on the street. This is the first uh, public serv servants whom we met most often. 
the, the next area is deregulation. This is a big thing. Uh, we analyzed more than 800 regulatory, initiative, uh, regulatory uh, rules in Ukrainian uh, uh, law system or regulatory system. Uh, currently, there is a list of 170 of them. And the way how we will be executing is very clear. We need to do a tick boxes of removing them. Very, very simple. Somewhere it's a, a decision, a decree of the cabinet of minister. Somewhere it's the uh, law. Somewhere it's um, a restructuring of institutions. So there is a very clear plan. I just don't want to go through this, but it's um, around 20% uh, pages document where we have all this listed and we know what to do. And now it's about traceability and accountability. And this is one of the things that National Reform Council will bring into the process uh, where we bring accountability around every reform. Pro every reform will be accountable on the regular basis, done, not done, who's responsible. So uh, this is the areas which is uh, where probably the most of the work done. The areas where we still have to work uh, is the area of uh, tax reform. The things that happened last year uh, in the parliament where we voted for the budget is not a reform. And I want to highlight that. That was a necessary uh, modification to the laws which would address the needs for the budget as well as the requirements of our financial uh, supporters, financial donors. The tax reform is still to come. It's, more, it's much more complex and it's need to address and incentivize to de-shadow Ukrainian economy. The other area is health care reform, ministry and uh, security and defense reform. On some of them, we already started a uh, process. There is uh, all the work done. But again, as I said, there's multiple opinions. And through this dialogue on the National Reform Council, we strongly believe this is the area to address. We uh, understand that the level of communication on the reform was not enough, and I can assure you this has been a top priority from the President and Prime Minister, how we will be communicated ev almost every day, the progress on the very, very key things that already taking place. Finally, by the security. Um, investors like peace. Uh, we also like peace. Ukrainian people also want peace. And that's why the, the Minsk meeting and the, the strategy of the president always been about the peace. At the same time, the conflict currently today is taking place on the 7% of Ukrainian territory. 90 plus percent um, is operating. Um, we have a lot of cases during the last year and this year where the international investors continue to invest particularly agriculture, and I know that you will be having a panel, and I suggest that you talk to the people who continue to invest. We have several big agribusinesses continue investment, in, including infrastructure investments. Um, the decision of their boards being in favor of Ukraine, and they continue to invest. We have several um, other international players who express a serious interest during the several meetings during Davos. Um, and I want to tell the realistic picture. We do not, in big scale, expect, I'm not expecting uh, volume of investments happening in 2015. But what I expect, and I always sense this during 2015, huge interests. Huge interests. I have a lot of meetings, actually, with investors, potential investors, private equity companies, who are scaling, assessing, analyzing what's happening in Ukraine, what's the potential. One of the questions that I think that will be fantastic if you um, uh, talk to the Ministry of Economy is about his idea of privatization of state-owned enterprises and changing the governance model for this area. I'm not going to steal his, uh, his vision for uh, the reform, but this is one of the key reform which a lot of, creates a lot of opportunity of interest for, um, for investment community. Same goes for their infrastructure, same goes for Agri, and I'm pretty sure that Minister of Finance is one of the best Minister of Finance I've ever seen in this country who have been able to run a very complex negotiation process with IMF and, and assure that we receive the necessary funding for the state, at the same time ensuring and securing that the key reform are listed in the memorandum. I think we, we have a lot of opportunities in the future. Um, we have a lot of hard work to do. We're not uh, removing the responsibility we have to execute, but we know this is a hard work and we're ready for that. With this, thank you.